Coco, Coco, we've known each other for I, so long. There's a, a cave painting of us at the Museum of Natural History. It's in hieroglyphics. Did they not give you a mic that works? No, I, I don't know. Is it on? It's on. Yeah. All right, I want you to tell the story about how you established a foothold in the cabaret world, because it's an extraordinary story. A, rich, uh, a superhero origin story about how you started. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure I know it. All right. <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to have to spoon feed this audience your origin story. No, you started doing your own cabaret show downtown, and you used to, like, spray paint these stenciled... Um, oh, well, that was to promote myself. Yes, no yes. one knew who I was, so yeah. I would spray paint on the sidewalk at night. Uh, I had a stencil that said, Miss Coco Peru, she knows. Right? <laughs> People walked around the city going, who's Miss Coco Peru? Why and what does she know? <laughs> anyway, I, uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, uh, anyway, um, no, so m my comedy is never, I never really thought of myself as a comic. It was more monologues, and it was born out of a rage, and um, I was angry. <laughs> Uh, what was happening with AIDS yes. and with gay rights, and I had seen funny gay males, these three comics, and I, there were no gay comics back then. There was Jackie Cohen, Cohen, Jackie Cohen, yeah. Bob Smith. who uh, wrote the screenplay yeah, for this you. Is about Jackie Cohen, Cohen. Okay, okay, sorry. Right now. <laughs> 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 anyway, she has the microphone. Yeah, no. You have the talking stick. But anyway, so what happened was I created Coco um, more out of activism back then. And then I didn't think it was going to be the thing that took off for me. I thought right. it would just be something that I would do for a little while. Yeah. But it took off because no one was doing what I did back then, which was not pretending to be a woman. I was right. talking about being a little boy and telling autobiographical stories. Mm -hmm. So, And then I kind of got swept up into the comic world. Um, just, I don't know how that happened. but Right. How soon that happened? Because this folds into our next um, question. When did you know that this was going to be your living? When this, this was going to be your bread and butter, your industry? Uh, ju I just, it, like jobs just kept coming, so I really, early on I didn't have to, I never had to waiter again, that was amazing for me not to have to be, I was the worst waiter in the world, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where did you work? Is this in New York? Yeah, I worked at, uh, I, was the, I really was the worst waiter. In I was the, the worst waiter too, my, my comments were always, she's hilarious, fire her. I used to, <laughs> I used to request the smoking section, because they drank, it took longer. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's how I got into comedy. And that's how it started for you, and you started to get the outside gigs and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. people started seeing my shows, and then they wanted to hire me for the other things. And, like I did the show last night with you, it was fabulous. And, and it's, but it's a different, it's a, it's a scary thing to, sh you know, when you're doing monologues and you're doing a one-person show, to have to show up and do just comedy. Yes. You know, it's well, how do you scary. how do you manage that? I mean, how, how different is that in the edibles? How, how different is that from your regular it's storytelling different, but gigs? It's different, you know, I, I, this is what I say in one of my shows. Um, it, it terrifies me. Yeah. And I just, but that everything in my life scares me. And, <laughs> and I just keep pushing through it, pushing through the fear. Absolutely. And that's, I think, where the magic happens. Pushing through the fear, I love that. Are you, you know what, believe me, darling, I'm pushing through the fish. 